Now we're going to talk about arc length and converting from degrees to radians and radians to degrees. But it's really important that we understand that we can't overstate what one radian is. The one radian, remember, this radian isn't really a unit. It's not like a degree. It's the it's the the angle equivalent of going from 0 to 1, except what we're doing is if we take a central angle, that just means that the vertex is at the origin, or excuse me, the center of the circle, and this guy right here is theta equals 1 radian. And it does not matter how big the radius of the circle is. So this is just a radius of r. That means that this arc length right here is always exactly the same as r. <laughs> That's always true, and that gives us a nice jumping off point to start talking about angle measures not as always being degrees but as being real number values that have no units associated with them. So what we have now is with this little display right here is we have a way to come up with a really cool formula and that cool formula is it's so simply made it's almost mind-boggling how simple it is. Watch. I know that I'm going to set up a proportion I know that theta is to 1, because theta and 1 are equal, as s is to r, because s and r are equal. Okay, and that's not difficult to figure out at all. If I do a quick little cross multiplication, I now have s equals r times theta. This right here is the equation for arc length. Now, you may have seen this before, but you probably haven't seen it in this context and how it was built using a radian measure of an angle, which is really very cool, at least I think so. All right, so you can use this whenever you want. It doesn't matter what r is now. It doesn't matter what theta is. However, and I'm going to put this in red just so everybody understands the importance of this. This always has to be in radians. I'm going to write into my seam here. It's got to be in radians, not degrees. Oops. Degrees. Well, that's just terrible. I apologize for that. It can't be in degrees. Now, Ripley, you may say, I've only thought of angles in terms of degrees. I need a way to convert from degrees to, or, yeah, from degrees to radians. However am I going to do this? It's actually been sitting right in front of our faces this whole entire time. I'll show you how it's done. Real simple. Go back to black. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. We know that the circumference of a circle, a circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. We learned this a long time ago, right? And we also know that s equals r theta, correct? So if you think about this, the circumference of a circle is just the arc length all the way around the outside of a circle, isn't it? It's the perimeter of the circle, which we've recently defined as the arc length. So if I look at this piece of information right here, if I take 2 pi r and I set it equal to r theta, because again, circumference is just the arc length, notice that my r's cancel, and if I divide through, I get 2 pi is to theta, which equals 1. Now you may be going, okay, well, all right, that's interesting, but that doesn't necessarily give me any information. Well, it does, because theta in this case, if I think in terms of degrees, and you may say, well, wait a second, Ridley, you told me that I'm not allowed to use degrees. That's correct, but like in this formula. However, I need a way to convert from degrees to radians, so I need to introduce degrees. Well, I know that the angle measure to create the circumference of the circle has to be 360 degrees. So I know that 2 pi is to 360 degrees as 1 is to 1, which implies that pi over 180 degrees equals 1. Which Now remember, this right here is in radians. It has no units. This is in degrees. It has units. Now, what this really means is pi radians 
equals 180 degrees. That may not appear as land shaking as to you as it did for me the first time, but let me show you how to use this. I'm going to pop over to the next page and watch how this works. Do you remember when you had to convert feet to inches? Like with your dimensional analysis, like if I had seven feet and I needed to turn feet into inches. And again, this is going to seem like a non sequitur, but I'm just going to do a quick little review of dimensional analysis. I could take seven feet times, whoops, excuse me, times 12 inches, let's stick a little H in there, excuse me, per one foot, and my units cancel. And what I ended up with was 84 inches. Now, watch this. Most of us think of angles, <clears throat> at least up to this point. Hitherto, we've thought of angles as being degree measures. So you may say, okay, Ripley, uh, let's think about a 90 degree angle, which we all know is a right angle. So if I were to put this on the Cartesian plane, on a circle even, it would be that angle right there. My initial side is on the positive x. My terminal side is right there, and that's a right angle. And we know that that would be 30 equals positive 90 degrees because I opened it up in the counterclockwise direction. I want to turn that. I want to convert that into radians. I want to know what 90 degrees is in terms of radians. So I need to lose this little degree unit. Watch how simple it is. I've got, remember, I've got, I know the fact that pi radians is to 180 degrees. Now again, just like my feet canceled here, my degrees are going to cancel here. So what this equals is 90 pi over 180. Notice my degrees are gone, so I get pi halves. Look at that. It's like magic. Ooh, ooh, let's do something harder. How about 30 degrees? And I want to convert this to radians. Well, again, no problem. I've got 30, that thing's driving me crazy. I've got 30 degrees times pi radians divided by 180 degrees. Cancel, cancel, and I end up with 30 pi over 180, whoops, that's supposed to be an 8, excuse me, and I get pi 6. Now, if you wanted to, you could write rads or radians or any of those things, but it just means not units on the real number line. So what it implies is it carries no units with it. It's so powerful. Now, similarly, let's say that I throw something like, like this at you. Ooh, how about this? I want to know what one radian is. How many degrees is one radian? Well, let, let's look at it. Let's check this thing out. So remember, if I want something, let's say, well, that's even going to be, let's go about, let's go about there. Remember, this is really badly drawn. This is my radius. This is my arc length. And I want this to be the same length as that, right? So, I mean, from our geometry and from our understanding of, of angles, I know that this is a 90 degree angle, so it's got to be less than 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees if I go halfway around the circle, and all the way around the circle is 360 degrees. So I want to know what theta equals one radian is in degrees. All right, well, let's have a look-see. Check it out. I'm going to take one rad, and I'm going to multiply it by. Now, think about this. If I go pi rads over 100, whoops, got a little lag there, sorry about that, over 180 degrees, look at what happens. I don't get cancellation. In fact, my units over here are going to be rads squared per degree. I believe eek is the term you wanted to use, the interjection. Excuse me. So what I need to do is I need to multiply 1 radian times 180 degrees per pi radians. Notice my radians cancel, 
and I get 180 degrees divided by pi. Now I'm good, but I'm not that good. So what I'm going to do is crack out my handy dandy little calculator here and I'm going to take 180 and I'm going to divide it by pi and I'm going to get 57. I'm going to use approximate because this thing clearly is going to be an irrational number because I'm dividing by an irrational number and that's a rational number and I'm going to get approximately 57 point two nine six degrees. Hey, look at that. Even with my cruddy drawing, that's pretty close to 57 degrees. All right. Guess what? You now have everything you need. Now let's play around with just a couple more examples and then um, we'll be done with the lesson. Try this one on your own. So pause the video and I'm going to take, I want you to take pi ninths. Notice, no units, so it's got to be in radians. And I want you to turn that into degrees for me. So go ahead and pause the video, and then when you come back, we'll convert pi ninths into degrees, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and start, and hopefully you've paused it, and now we're going over how to do it. So here we go. I'm going to do pi ninths. It's got no units, but I can think of this, if I wanted to, sort of parenthetically as being radians. That would help me. It's like, okay, wait, do I multiply by pi radians over 180? degrees or 180 degrees? Oh, I need degrees. So I'm going to do 180 degrees over pi rads. Now, from this point hence, I'm not going to write rads anymore. All right? So we just got to get used to the fact that if we don't see units, then that means we're talking about radians. So radians cross out, pi's cross out. I'm left with degrees, which is exactly what I want, and I get 180 degrees divided by 9, which is affectionately known as 20 degrees. So pi ninths radians is 20 degrees. Well, try your favorite angle measure. How about, oh goodness, let's do uh, 165 degrees, and I'm going to turn this into radians. So again, take a moment, go ahead and pause the video if you'd like, and then I'm going to do the solution, and we'll see what you got. All right, hopefully you gave that a shot. I'm going to go ahead and kick over on the next page, give us a little bit of room to work from. We're going to take 165 degrees, and we're going to convert it to radians. So I'm going to multiply by, now think about it, if I multiply by 180 degrees over pi, I'm going to end up with degrees squared. And I don't even know what that means. That sort of frightens me. So I think, okay, pi over 180 degrees. Now, if... I want to put on the radians. I can, but you got to get used to thinking thinking of those as being not there. It just means they're real numbers. All right. So when I multiply this out, I get 165. Notice before I go crazy that my degrees cancel, and 165 pi over 180. Now, some of those out there among you may say, "Well, let's throw it in my calculator. Let's see what this thing does." 165 pi divided by 180. If you've got your calculator handy. This thing ends up being, excuse me, approximately, remember it's irrational, so I can only say approximately 2.88. Now, if you're new to the game and you look at 2.88 radians, it's like, what the heck am I looking at? However, if I reduce this fraction and I say, okay, 11 twelfths, and then I'm going to have pi, so I would say 11 pi over 12. Well, I know that pi is 180 degrees, and 180 degrees is when you take an angle, and you make a line with it, right? So 11 twelfths of that is just a hair short, right there. So that's theta equals 11 pi twelfths, which is pretty cool. All right, now, what we're going to emphasize in this lesson is you becoming fluent at being able to convert very, very quickly from radians to, to degrees and degrees to radians. You may ask why I want you to be able to convert from radians to degrees. Again, I'm not asking you to give up your old skill set that you were good at. You're probably pretty good at visualizing um, a 400 degree angle or a 19 degree angle or a 110 degree angle. but I want you to be fluent at thinking in terms of radians as well. And you being able to jump back and forth from radians to degrees and degrees to, to radians will build that fluency. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you tomorrow in class and we'll do a whole bunch of these for practice. Have a really good day.